Amanda Ripley, High Conflict, Why We Get Trapped and How We Get Out Embark on a journey through High Conflict, Why We Get Trapped and How We Get Out by Amanda Ripley and discover the captivating world of high conflict and its effect on individuals and society. This book summary delves into the compelling nature of polarizing disputes, the differences between high conflict and healthy conflict, and the impact high conflict can have on one's mental and physical well-being. Moreover, learn about the role of conflict entrepreneurs in escalating tensions and how public humiliation fuels the fire of conflict. The strategies and insights provided in this book will enable readers to better understand the intricate nature of high conflict and guide them toward embracing healthier, more constructive forms of conflict resolution. The Costly Attraction of High Conflict High conflict disputes often provide a sense of belonging, purpose, and power, drawing individuals and groups in with their compelling clarity of black and white issues. However, this type of conflict is costly and can lead to financial, relational, and even life repercussions. Good conflict, on the other hand, is grounded in humility, expresses a range of emotions, and seeks shared solutions. When conflict escalates past a certain point, it becomes its own reality, trapping participants in a pattern without the potential for change or growth. High conflict sees only a zero-sum game, while healthy conflict looks for a win-win solution. Participants become certain of their righteousness and demonize the other side, leading to outrage and a derailment of good judgment. High conflict elicits the stress hormone cortisol, which damages mental and physical well-being over time. In short, the attraction of high conflict is costly and ultimately unsustainable. The Pitfalls of Binary Conflicts Contemporary society's penchant for reducing complex social and political issues to simple binaries is counterproductive when it comes to good governance. This adversarial model favored in law, politics, and the media creates bad blood and perpetuates systemic divisiveness. Winners become more aggressive, and losers resentful, exacerbating the situation. Binary conflicts also cause people to overestimate differences, leading to further polarization. Despite being motivated and aligned by binaries, cooperation is needed to govern effectively. We must recognize the downsides of this approach and strive for greater understanding, empathy, and cooperation. Group Polarization and the Importance of Cooperation Humans have a tendency to conform to their in-groups and oppose out-groups, which can lead to polarization. Traditions and systems play a crucial role in shaping people's behavior. Instead of demonizing others, promoting mutual support and cooperation can build strong bonds within groups. Alternative conflict resolution approaches such as consensus building, mediation, and ranked choice voting can reduce polarization and promote fairness. Encouraging fluidity between groups and identities can also prevent rigid binary thinking. Our strong inclination towards cooperation has been crucial to our evolutionary success as a species. The Dangers of Conflict Entrepreneurs Conflict entrepreneurs capitalize on high conflict, weaponizing the concerns of opposing groups and amplifying accusations and grievances. Politicians who benefit from stirring up ethnic strife are also conflict entrepreneurs. High conflict often leads to violence, especially in societies where people don't trust their government to keep order impartially. Humiliation can exacerbate high conflict, leading to a desire to annihilate the responsible parties. It is crucial to be aware of when our identities feel electrified and ask who benefits from the conflict. Escaping High Conflict The book explains that to escape high conflict, a participant often needs to reach a saturation point where the burdens and costs outweigh the rewards. Support from others in the group, often women or elders, is vital. Major life disruptions, such as the birth or death of a loved one, can also create an opportunity for change. However, leaving the conflict is challenging, as the group still sees you as part of their team and the enemy still views you as an enemy. It's crucial to create a new context and identity unrelated to the conflict, even if it takes years of effort to disentangle oneself from the old identity. 
Strategies to Break Free from High Conflict Participation Breaking the habit of engaging in high conflict can be difficult, but there are several strategies to help. The first is to limit contact with people who enjoy discord. This may involve reducing social media use or cutting off contact with zealots in your group. If contact is unavoidable, prepare topics of conversation that do not relate to the conflict. Additionally, practicing slow, rhythmic breathing can help you stay calm and think rationally. It is important to find ways to distract yourself from the conflict and to view others as innocent children. Finally, Try reframing the situation by looking at it from a different perspective, such as that of a neutral third party. By utilizing these techniques, you can break free from high conflict participation and think more clearly in triggering situations. Uncovering the understory of conflict. To resolve conflict effectively, it's essential to identify the underlying concerns that drive it. People stuck in high conflict often don't know the understory and get fixated on surface-level issues. For instance, a divorcing couple may argue over a crock pot, but it's not about the item itself. Exploring why it matters to each person can help reveal their emotional needs, desires, and regrets. By acknowledging these deep-seated truths, healthy and constructive conflict resolution becomes possible, provided participants are open to genuinely understanding the other side's perspective. The power of active listening. It's natural to assume that our messages and motivations are clear to others during times of conflict. However, this can lead to misunderstandings and a lack of empathy towards others. Active listening can transform high conflict into healthy conflict by demonstrating that you truly understand and value the other person's perspective. When people feel heard, they become more open, trusting, and satisfied with the outcome. Active listening cultivates curiosity and openness, making it easier to identify priorities and achieve a shared commitment to any resulting agreement. The Power of Contact Theory Building relationships through purposeful contact can break down us-versus-them labels, as people find it harder to caricature those they have met and liked. Studies prove that this approach can work for any culture and demographics. Contact theory involves bringing opposing sides to collaborate in identifying and solving a common problem. Such gatherings are best when hosted by a respected authority, with everyone having a voluntary and equal say. What makes the contact theory successful is the willingness and capacity to tolerate discomfort and uncertainty that comes with forging a new path. Navigating Conflict with Curiosity Discover the fourth way to explore real and painful differences without getting trapped in high conflict. By investigating the understory, disempowering conflict entrepreneurs, and cultivating curiosity, participants develop conflict resilience. Curiosity enables healthy conflict and meaningful change by demonstrating active listening, understanding, and respect. Engaging with complexity and rejecting simplistic binaries, participants turn conflict into an interesting challenge that strengthens communities. Rewritten. Conflicts are inevitable, but they need not be destructive. With the fourth way, people can explore their differences without being trapped in high conflict. This approach combines practices that investigate the true sources of conflict, avoid simplistic binaries, disempower conflict entrepreneurs, and cultivate curiosity. Conflict resilience emerges from this approach, enabling healthy interaction and growth even during the tension of disagreement. Curiosity is critical in healthy conflict and essential for meaningful change. It requires both asking and answering questions and practicing active listening. By demonstrating understanding, even when disagreement persists, participants can build trust and mutual respect. Small, positive interactions build up over time and help establish healthy relationships. When all parties in a conversation acknowledge the complexity of a problem and remain curious, conflicts become interesting challenges that strengthen communities. Ultimately, conflict can become an opportunity for growth, building stronger relationships and deeper understanding. As we conclude our exploration of High Conflict by Amanda Ripley, it's essential to reflect on the valuable insights gained. Readers should now have a deeper understanding of the characteristics and consequences of high conflict, 
as well as the distinctions between this destructive force and good conflict. Society often enforces a binary and adversarial approach to issues, but alternative methods such as consensus-building practices, mediation, and ranked-choice voting can promote cooperation and fairness. By identifying underlying concerns and employing active listening skills, we can transition from high conflict to healthier, more constructive interactions. With curiosity, empathy, and a willingness to navigate complexity, we can foster conflict resilience and build stronger, more supportive communities.